In this video, I'm going to show you how I designed a 3D printable wing that can be printed in one continuous outline throughout the whole printing process, which is part of my latest video on my main channel with the radio controlled vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Let's hop into Fusion 360. The first thing we need is the airfoil profile, which I downloaded from airfoiltools.com. This is just a, an image of the NACA 4412 airfoil, and I've just imported it as a canvas. Uh, then the next step is to draw an outline sketch, which I've actually already done because it's fairly straightforward. It's just a bunch of curves and lines uh, which make up the airfoil profile. So if we finish that sketch, we can extrude this, say 200 millimeters long, and we can get rid of the uh, canvas picture because we now have the airfoil profile. Uh, the next step, what we need to do is go up to here where the bodies are, which are basically like the solid objects in the in the CAD software. And I'm going to name this outer wing. And then we also need to make a copy of that and call that, uh, I'm going to call it ribs. Uh, so what we need to do is hide the outer wing uh, body. So we just have the ribs layer. And if we, let's hide that sketch as well. Let's uh, look down on top of the wing and create another sketch and then just draw a huge rectangle. Uh, the dimensions of this will become important in a minute, but for now I'm just going to do 300 millimeters tall uh, and then I'm also going to do it 150 millimeters from the origin just so it's roughly central with the where the wing spar will go eventually. Uh, let's slide these over a tiny bit and what we need to do is draw a diagonal line. I'm going to constrain this at 45 degrees. Uh, this is important when 3D printing because the wings are printed in this direction. So if the ribs are too far angled down, then there's too much of an overhang. I'm sure if you're watching this, you're probably familiar with 3D printed overhang problems. Um, you can get away with, I think these are probably like a 35 degree angle, but for this demonstration, 45 degrees will do the job. We also need to do another line with a 45 degree angle so we have a crisscross uh, and then do two more lines which are parallel to these lines uh, let's make them parallel and then we need to constrain the distance between each of these parallel lines as 0 0.1 millimeters and the other one 0 0.1 millimeters and then we need to just slide over to the left a tiny bit more and zoom all the way in. Select all of the four lines and do a rectangular pattern up here on the left. And we need to do, I'm going to do 30 millimeter spacing uh, just because then it looks, just looks right because the, uh, the it's almost di uh, diamond squares. Uh, and we need to move that along till we get a large diamond shape which goes right to the top and right to the bottom of this rectangle. So we have this huge diamond shape here. And what we need to do is position this diamond shape right on the edge of the wing. So we can strain like this, constrain like this. I'm going through this very fast. You can do your own rib patterns, but this is just how I do it. Uh, so now we have the crisscross pattern lined up with the edge of the wing. Finish this sketch and we need to extrude some of these squares. So we do the extrude tool up here on the left. Select all of these squares going down the middle. Uh, in fact, we don't need to do all of them because not all of them will cut through the wing. And we need to look at it from a flat side here so we can make sure that it's extruding all the way through the wing. Do a symmetric extrude. And there we go, we have a funny zigzag pattern in the side of the, the the ribs. So then what we need to do from this is select that extrude down at the bottom, click the rectangular pattern up at the top, and I think we might need to select the direction. So I'm going to select the direction as going to the side. And we need to also set this to 30 millimeters because it has to match the spacing that we did on the previous sketch. Uh, and then we just need to repeat that over and over again till it covers the whole wing. And now we should have some 
rib-like looking crisscross section. Now before we actually put these into the outer skin wing uh, part, we need, we need to rewind a bit to the first sketch and basically cut all of these ribs in half down the middle. Uh, the reason for this is that when the printer goes round and does the, the rib, it will go down and then back up again and then up and then back down again. So basically the ribs are sliced in half in the middle. If they're not sliced in half in the middle, the printer will do this portion of the wing and then it will stop and do this portion of the wing. So to slice these in half, we need to go back to the first sketch and I just draw, I'm just gonna draw a rough curve all the way from the front to the back. Uh, like that, that's like roughly in the middle. Uh, then draw another one, front to back. Make sure they're co-centric with each other. And then I'm going to space them apart by uh, about point, mm, point 0.6. 0.6 millimeters will do, so it's just wider than the printer nozzle, so the slicer won't get confused. Uh, but it's not too wide that the the ribs won't actually join together in the center. Then, if I lower the radius of this, does it move up? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so it's not exactly through the center of the wing. Uh, you can spend a bit more time if you design your own wing to get it, you know, instead of one continuous curve, you can do multiple radius curves, so it's directly through the middle. That's That's what I did with this wing. Took a bit longer, but I'm just giving you a demo here. Uh, and then what we need to do is, where did the sketch go? Here's a sketch. So we need to click the extrude tool, select this uh, middle curve and slice it all the way through the wing. Now, if we hide the sketch again. Now, if we look from the side, we have upper ribs and lower ribs and you can see there's two bodies up here on the left, so there's a, there's a bottom one and there's the top one. Uh, now we can actually print the wing uh, after one more step, um, which is the important step. What we need to do is, so if we bring the outer wing back in, uh, so now we have all three bodies. We have the outer wing, we have the upper ribs and the lower ribs. We need to click the combine tool up at the top. The target body will be the outer wing because that's the... That's basically the main model. And then the and then the tool bodies are the ribs. So it basically takes those rib profiles and cuts them out of the, uh, the outer wing body. And if we click OK, we can see now there's only one body left up at the top and it's got all these internal rib structures. So if we export that as an STL and then import it into our slicer software, we should have the wing like this. Oh, it's it's the wrong orientation, uh, but that's easily fixed by doing this. Uh, rotate it slightly, uh, move it down slightly. So now we have the wing model in in our slicer software. Uh, now what we need to do is go on printer settings and make sure it's in spiral vars mode. Uh, that means that it will basically print it as one continuous line, and we click slice. So there we have a wing which has all, it, all these internal ribs and zero retractions. And as you can see, the printer, when it draws the ribs, it will go down from the top, stop halfway, go back up, go round, up, and back down again. Now, to create the holes in the ribs, we need to go back to Fusion 360. And I'm going to do this very roughly. Um, but basically, you just draw a bunch of circles. Uh, this is, well, that's not a very good thing. Obviously, they can't be larger than the wing itself. Uh, so we just do like this, do like that. Oh, that's a bit too big. I'm doing this very roughly, uh, and it will end up like... Actually, I don't even have a version of the first wing here. Obviously, this one took a lot longer to try and follow the exact profile of the wing, but gives you the general idea of how it works. If I keep doing these. Again, this will produce a fairly usable wing, even doing it like this. Uh, it's just spending more time, we'll just save a bit more weight and 
you know, just looks a bit nicer. Uh, so we've got all the circles on the edge here and we do the extrude tool. Actually, no, wait, I forgot one step. I forgot one step. We need to delete the combine thing at the bottom here because we need to hide the outer wing so that we're back at the rib section. Uh, so we have all the circles at the bottom. Extrude tool, we need to select them all and then extrude them all the way through. So we're only cutting the upper ribs and the lower ribs, not the outer skin. Make sure that's deselected on the visibility thing. Uh, and then we do a cut. So this is what the ribs will look like when they're done. And then now we do the combine tool again. So make sure the outer wing is showing. Combine tool at the top. Select the outer wing. This is exactly the same process as we just did a second ago. Uh, and then tool bodies select the ribs, cut the ribs out of the outer wing, and then we have the model, export. So now if we slice it, we should have all the wing ribs and all the circles through the center. Doesn't look very neat, but does the job, works pretty well. Uh, I actually need to, I need to get rid of the bottom layer on this. How do I change that? Here we go. Get rid of the bottom layer things. Let's try that slice now there we go now we can see all the way through the wing this looks pretty cool okay the last final step which is how i got the wing spire in here this probably isn't majorly important to all of you um unless you well actually it might be because 3d printed wings should probably have wing spars uh the way that i do that is we need to go on the timeline at the bottom before the combine tool again so that we can get rid of the outer wing and I'm also going to move one of the uh, let's look at these circles a second I'm going to delete this one and this one because basically you don't want to have a hole through the ribs where the um, wing spar is going to go okay so now there's no um, circles interfering with where I'm going to put the wing spar Right, so to create the wing spar mount, uh, it's a little more complicated than the circles. Uh, what I'm going to do is hide all the ribs and create a sketch uh, like this. Uh, I'm actually going to bring the outer wing uh, body back just so we have a rough idea of how tall the wing is. I'm going to create a wing spar hole of 14 millimeters because that's the diameter of this thing for this wing spar. Uh, you can create it whatever diameter you want depending on the carbon um, fiber spar or aluminium spar you want to put in it and then we need to create another circle which is one millimeter larger then what we need to do is create a rectangle which goes well it doesn't matter how tall it is as long as it is taller than the aerofoil profile so I'm going to do this needs to be one so it needs to be two millimeters wide but I'm just doing it one millimeter either side of the origin so that it's centralized with the origin and then we need to create another rectangle in the middle of this but this one needs to be uh let's so it needs to be 0 0.0.05 0 .0 one side of the origin and 0 0.05 the other side so 0 0.1 millimeters uh wide but it's Again, central, centralized with the origin. Uh, now, the bottom of this needs to extend out the bottom of the aerofoil, which it's doing. But the top of this needs to be one millimeter from the top of the wing. So what I do is I move it up like that, so it's roughly at the top. Constrain it to the origin. And it says 11.775, so I'm just going to take off one millimeter from that. Uh, again, I'm doing this very, you know very quickly. Uh, all of these lines really should be constrained in CAD, but currently I'm just, you know, just just winging it, just winging it as you do. Uh, so what we need to do is hide the outer wing again and bring the ribs back in. And actually before we bring the ribs back in, let's select what we need to extrude. So click the extrude tool and we need to select everything. So even that thin little line in the middle, so we've selected the whole profile, bring the ribs back in, and we need to cut this all the way through, like so. 
So now we have a slot through the middle, which is like a circle with two lines in the top. Next step, we need to do the extrude tool again. Uh, now the sketch has hidden itself because we've already extruded it, so we need to make that visible again. And select the circle and the thin line like this. And what we need to do is we need to extrude this 200 millimeters, so it's the length of the wing, uh, but it's going to be a new body, so it's going to be. Uh, so now we're going to have. Let's have a look. So we've now, if I hide that sketch, we've now got bottom right ribs, top left ribs, bottom left ribs, top right ribs, and that central uh, wing spar body. So I'm going to delete the combined tool at the bottom because we need to redo it anyway. So delete that, bring the outer wing back in, and we need to do the combined tool at the top. Now we do this again the same as the other uh, combine processes where the target body is the outer wing and the tool bodies are the ribs. So we need to select all of the ribs like so and also that wing spar body uh, and do it as a cut and click OK. Now we have just the outer wing body left and we have all of the internal structure for this wing that we need. So if we save this, export it, then we import it, export, import, export, import, da, 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 da. Uh, reposition because I was lazy to design the cab model properly. Uh, angle it right, slide it down, slice. And now we should have a wing with all of the internal ribs, the wing spar mount, and all of the holes in the thingies, in the ribs, all printed as one piece. So there's zero retractions throughout the whole print. Pretty easy, isn't it? <laughs> well, it is once you know how to do it. It took me about three weeks to figure out those few steps. So, um, but once you know how to do it, it's pretty satisfying. And you can print cool wings like this for cool vertical takeoff planes like this. Thanks very much for watching. If you found this video useful, please leave a thumbs up and uh, maybe consider subscribing to the second channel. I'll see you in the next video.